for whatever reason, they, they don't. And any, any of that would just be an excuse. They conveniently interpret the rules of the religion so that they can't help him, even, you know, even if they wanted to. Just can't. In many ways, the, this is the church. We really want to help people. It's just, well, you know, we have our own excuses, like those two religious people. And, and the bottom line of most of the excuses that they had and that we can come up with is that we just don't want to get involved. To become engaged and entangled in someone else's troubles just merely adds to our own troubles. Who doesn't have enough troubles? Because someone will share with you. And perhaps most importantly, transformational ministry, like helping the poor get healthier, means extending ourselves beyond our comfort zones. Notice, though, that the person who eventually helps the man in the road is the unlikeliest of unlikely heroes, a Samaritan who helps a Jew after two Jews refused. That should not be lost on, on anyone this morning. And not only that, he offers over and above assistance. Right? He offers the innkeeper two denarii and then says, if that's not enough, put it on my tab and when I get back, I'll pay you what you've spent. That would have been jaw-dropping for a Jew to hear out of Jesus' mouth. And the lawyer to whom he's speaking would have been a good Jew. And it also would have been jaw-dropping to the Samaritans. What is this man doing? Those Jews, those are our enemies. And here he is nursing one back to health and helping in whatever way that he can. So both sides had risk involved. Yet I think that's the actual lesson that Jesus wants us to see out of this parable. And that's why he makes a, 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 an in-your-face hero in the parable. Remember the beginning of the parable is the lawyer asking Jesus, who is my neighbor? Because he's trying to get clarification around the great commandment, right? Who, who shall I love with all my heart and soul and mind and strength? And Jesus says, right, your neighbor, God and your neighbor. And so he wants to know, who's my neighbor? And and the answer to that question is this parable where Jesus says, this is the kind of person that you need to be if you are going to love your neighbor. This is your neighbor, the one who has fallen on the road and can't, can't get up. There's no clappers yet. So one cannot truly reflect Christ without a genuine concern for the poor. And if the church, global church, is in the business of transformation, it also then has to be in the business of economic and social transformation. Otherwise, we're just a social club and not the body of Christ and the reflection of Christ. As the ushers uh, come forward to, to help uh, to receive the offering and our acolytes and, and uh, the liturgist gets in place for announcements, let me read you a, a paragraph that John Wesley said in his sermon 
on visiting the sick. He says, one great reason why the rich in general have so little sympathy for the poor is because they so seldom visit them. Hence it is that, according to the common observation, one part of the world does not know what the other suffers. Many of them do not know because they do not care to know. They keep out of the way of knowing it and then plead their voluntary ignorances as an excuse for their hardness of heart. He goes on. I know that's where the graphic ends. But he says, he, he, he is quoting a person. He says, indeed, sir, said a person of large substance, I'm a very compassionate man, but to tell you the truth, I do not know anyone in the world that is in want. How did it, this come to pass? Wesley asked why he took great care to keep out of their way. And if he fell upon them unawares, he passed over onto the other side to avoid them. Let's pray. God, as we come this morning to receive the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, May our generosity ooze out of us so that we can continue to be a church of transformation, to provide those on the front lines with what they need, both here and far, and to change us through our generosity so that we may show the love that we have of you and to help our neighbors. So all of this, I pray a blessing upon in the name of Christ. Amen. While the ushers are receiving this morning's tithes and offerings, let me call your attention to a few announcements. A new weekly email on church happenings has been started. <clears throat> Many of you have noticed those, I'm sure. It's called Reflection Points. If you haven't been receiving it on Thursdays and wish to do so, please use the communication card in the bulletin jack packet to update your directory information. If you're listening on the radio and would like to receive this, call the church office, and the number is 785 Four six zero two seven six one, and you will be added to the email list. Use number reflect Christ on Facebook to tag post events, people, situations, or anything else that you see that reflects Christ in the world. Patrick, pa uh, Pastor Patrick, will use these to help us see Christ at work in our community and world. Summer Youth Program enrollment will be May 20th from 4 to 6 at uh, the church. Construction continues on the new parsonage. On the screen is a uh, recent picture. More picture updates are on the church website and Facebook page. Be sure to look at those. It's uh, coming right along. Bike Across Kansas will be coming through Colby June 8th and 9th. The church is sponsoring a breakfast on June 9th, starting at 5.30 a.m. Proceeds will be the, from the breakfast will be used for mission projects. See Sam Funks for ways you can help with this event and make it successful. Summer camp reg registration is now open. Go to camplakeside.net to see what camps are being offered this summer. It's always a great honor when a former student is recognized for excellence. And um, Friday night at the Colby Community College graduation ceremony, Crystal Pounds was uh, the, honor, the honoree and received the Tangeman Award for excellence in teaching at the college. And uh, I would just like to make sure everybody knew about that because that's pretty outstanding. Congratulations, Crystal. Yeah, thank you. Also, uh, 
game night is this upcoming Saturday. And so from six to nine in Fellowship Hall, bring a game, bring something, yeah, if you want. Uh, you can always bring a snack to share, uh, but most importantly, just bring yourself and uh, come. It's always a, a good time. Those who are helping with the uh, Southwestern College students tomorrow, uh, if you can be at the church somewhere between 9 and 9.30 in the evening, uh, they will they will be coming here and then we will kind of divide them out amongst uh, everybody who who needs who who has said uh, that you would accept one or, or more of those students as they get ready to leave and go to Iceland for their for their conference so and thank you all for for doing that For our closing song, let's do the odd verses. Seems appropriate, doesn't it? Okay. As we go out into the world on this Mother's Day, may each of you go out with the blessing of the Holy Spirit to be upon you and to do all of the good that you can by all of the means that you can in all of the ways that you can to as many as you can for as long as you can. Go and do. Amen.